Hi guys, my name is Christian and welcome. So, I know that it's quite hard to come by good quality multitracks for free. So I thought that I would give away a track completely for free. No strings attached, you don't have to sign up for anything. You'll find a direct link in the description. And yeah, so the song is a song that I produced back in... 2014 and usually when you look back on old productions you look back in shame but this one is pretty decent and the most important thing is that the song is really good. The song is called The Point of No Return with the band JD Miller and this song really has it all. We got real drums, mic'd up guitar amplifiers, real good bass and blazing guitar solos and amazing vocals. Later in this episode I will go through the tracks so I can share with you my thought process, which microphones I used and which amps and whatnot. But before we do that let's hear a preview of the song so you guys can decide if this is something for you. Roll tape! Okay, hopefully that got you guys excited and if you like the music you can support the band by checking out their Facebook or their Spotify. I'll leave a couple of links in the description down below and yeah, let's jump into Pro Tools and check out the files. Okay, so here we have the session. It is around 50 tracks of glorious heavy metal. So hopefully you guys will enjoy mixing this. We'll start from the top with the drums. So this is just drums with some basic EQ. Sounds pretty nice. And you guys will receive a replaced kick drum. That's just because I had to do some trickery to be able to get a good performance out of the drummer. In this case it was more about, you know, not being able to rehearse a new song than the drummer not able to perform because this is a good drummer. But this is the real kick. So this is the Shure Beta 91 pancake microphone. You know the one that you put inside of the kick. And if the drummer plays well and the kick drum sounds good, it can almost sound like a triggered kick in a good way. So very nice isolation and punch. Moving on to the snare, this is just a basic SM57.
sound as it should, should be able to use that to augment it with samples to make it sound really punchy and modern. Moving on to the toms. So this is the Audio-Technica ATM450. These are very small pencil microphones that are very handy just because of the size, because sometimes it can be quite hard to get microphones to fit between cymbals and such. And they sound very nice, a bit more real sounding than say the standard 421s, which sound pretty boring to be honest, but sound good in context. But these can sound very good on their own. You should check them out. They are about half the price of the 421s, so very affordable and nice sounding microphones. Moving on to the overheads, these are vintage Neumann KM84s, not to be confused with the new 184s. The old ones sound a lot better in my opinion. So the old ones really capture the symbol and the stick hitting the symbol in a way that I never experienced with another microphone. And they are very balanced, not bright or brittle as a lot of newer microphones can sound like, especially on cymbal bashers. So they are pretty pricey these days, but they are excellent. Let's have a listen with some basic EQ. So as you can hear, it is a spaced pair. I was really into getting super separated overheads at this time, perhaps a bit over the top, but it still sounds pretty nice and balanced. Moving on to the ambience, and these are the Sheep SE Electronics X1 microphones. And in my former studio, the drum room was super small, as you can hear in the recording. But I would still recommend using ambient microphones on drums, even if you are in a similar situation, because you can smash them, distort them, and they can really add cohesiveness to the whole drum sound. So just a good way to add some depth to the drums. And then we have a ride spot microphone. It is probably an SM57, could be a KM84 as well, I really don't remember. But this is just a safety measure to be able to push the ride bell if needed to. Moving on to the bass, this is a Fender Jazz bass. Very clean signal, so you can manipulate it to pretty much whatever you'd like it to sound like in the mix. So this is with the plugins. Moving on to the rhythm guitars. So this is a PVGSX amplifier with no boost and also with a Mesa Boogie 2x12 rectifier cab. And I used a SM57 and a KM84 on the cabinet. <laughs> So the dark one is the KM84 and the more bright one is the SM57. I think they complement each other quite well. 
So this is also a pair of left-right guitars and one in the center. And the center guitar can really add some cohesiveness so it doesn't sound super panned and also can add some punch to the guitars. Moving on to the lead and clean guitars. First off, we have the clean guitar. I think this is just DI guitars. Sounds pretty boring without plugins, as I will demonstrate. And in the chorus, we have a pair of octaves. And uh, later in the song is a very cool part with clean guitars, some uh, harmony guitars. We'll have a listen here. You're my So that's a quite nice part in this song. Moving on to the guitar solo. I do believe that all lead guitars are SM57 with the same guitar setup, the PVGSX with the rectifier cabinet. Moving on to the vocals, this singer is one of the best singers that I worked with, so it was a lot of fun working out the arrangement and uh, doing the harmonies and things like that. The lead vocals are dubbed the whole way through because that was the sound that we were after. The microphone is the Peluso 2247 limited edition and it is also processed with a hardware 1176. I walk the earth a mindless puppet falling down My creak and bones they make it And in the chorus we have a low octave following the lead vocals and a harmony and also a add harmony popping up in the chorus. Adding a low octave or a octave above the lead vocals is a good way to just adding width to the vocals. All harmonies are also dubbed so we can pan them. I will try to make a difference A difference on my own Take control of things controlled I will try to make a difference going down Then take control of things controlled very nice performance and then we have a choir here that is doing a kind of a response to the lead vocals what is outside my control what is outside my control what What is outside my control? 
Okay, that's it for today's episode. Hopefully you guys will have a great time mixing this song. And if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you around.